Today I want to show you 13 creative sound design techniques which are going to help you develop your signature sound which as we know is super important to stick out when it comes to music. I'll show you each technique in order and at the end we're going to apply them all and this is what we're going to end up with. You can also download my sound design bible completely free below this video which is going to give you my 12 step process for recreating any sound that you can hear in any track. So when it comes to creative sound design there are a few core principles, three in fact, which are going to help us develop all of the other techniques. So we'll touch upon those first and then get into the other techniques afterwards. Okay without further ado let's hop into the door and get it done. So as I said there are three core principles which are going to help you create pretty much any sound that you want. The first of which is tweaking parameters. So whether you're using a soft synth or whether you're using a sampler, or even if you're just tweaking things within the mixer itself of whichever door you're using, automating and tweaking these parameters is gonna allow you to create movement over time. So here's a really quick example of what that might sound like. So here's our bass sound. And if we tweak parameters as we listen to it, we can hear straight away that it's gonna create some interesting sound effect and you can create you can tweak other parameters as well, of course. Okay, so this is gonna play a core part in some of our later techniques. The second core principle that we need to think about is converting to audio. So if we wanted to resample something, we then open up a world of other possibilities of what we can do with that sound. So in this example, it might be a case of creating an audio channel, selecting what the input's gonna be. So in this case, it's gonna be the bass, arming that, and then just recording that sound in. So at this point, we can manipulate this signal in different ways that we couldn't when it was just a synth. So that's the second core principle. Now the third is one step on from that. So you've got parameter tweaks within the synth or sampler, you've got bouncing it to audio, and the third, and the kind of wizard one where you can do even more, is to then make a sample. So now we can actually play this on different notes within a sampler. And those are the three core principles that we're gonna look at in these techniques. Okay, so let's really start digging into some creative sound design techniques. And let me know if you're enjoying this in the comments below and what you want me to cover on this channel. Okay, so let's get in at the deep end. We've got our loop here. We've got some side chain compression on a few things so it can duck against the kick, just to clear up the mix a bit. Got our call and response riff here. And if you want tips on how to layer your synths up in a creative way, then you can click the video that's popping up now. But let's get onto that first creative sound technique. What I want to do is actually use these beats and use a vocoder on them to make a really interesting texture. So here are our beats at the moment. Pretty cool, I'm liking that. And then we've got our chords underneath, like this. Again, with a bit of sidechain compression. Let's open these up, the filter. And what we want to do is now take these chords and use that as the signal or the modulator, one of the two. We're gonna be using it to make the beat sound vocoded anyway. So I'm gonna use the vocoder that comes with Ableton, but it doesn't matter which one you use. So let's go to vocoder, drag that onto the channel with the beats, choose the carrier to be external, and then choose the input to be the chords. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these chords to be sends only. So we're not actually gonna hear these chords, we're just gonna use them to vocode the beats. And now let's listen to what happens. A bit like Roiksop. So how cool is that now? And then you can tweak these settings within the vocoder as well, like the formant. That's lush, man. 
So you don't only have to use vocoders when it comes to vocals and synths, you can also be creative and just think of interesting ways in which you can root that vocoder and beats is a great one. Okay, the second technique I'm gonna show you is using a vocal, but as an instrument rather than just the audio. So I've written this harmony riff just with a normal synth. This is quite nice. But what we want to do is actually use a vocal in a sampler and then play that with that riff. And that's something very popular by producers such as DJ Snake. You can get that really interesting vocal chop sound. So what I'm going to do is bring in a vocal. I'm going to use splice for this, but it doesn't matter where you get the vocal from. And we only want one little note from this vocal. But it's important that we then tune it to middle C and I'll show you why in a minute. So let's firstly find a note. We can turn off warp. Just find a note or a syllable that sounds nice, like it could be used for a good instrument. That already sounds good. That's nice. Okay, so we're going to use this note. Let's find a beginning. Here's a good point. So let's just keep that note. There's a bit of vibrato in it, which is quite nice. It's important that you only have one note playing, other might, it might screw things up. So we've got that one note. Let's just consolidate it. So it's just using that. Now it's important to make this note hit middle C. We can either do it now by retuning it or we can do it in the sampler itself. So I'm gonna do that. Let's just call this vocal riff and load in a sampler. It doesn't matter if you are using an external third party sampler like Contact or one of the stock plugins from whichever door you're using. So in Ableton, it's quite easy because you can just drag that audio in. And now we've got a sample, as I showed at the beginning, that we can now play. So I'm just going to tune this to middle C. Now the easiest way to do it is find a synth that is already gonna be tuned correctly. Press the middle C button. Make sure you can hear it. Dun, dun, dun. And we need to go to our vocal. Mm and make sure that it's hitting that same note when we hit middle C, which it's not. So at that point, let's just tune it. I'm going to tune it up. Mm -hmm. Now that's correct. So I can hear that middle C on our sampler is the same as middle C on our uh, synth. Now, if you don't have an ear to tune it by ear like that, what you can use is a tuner plugin in Ableton. I'm going to go and use the tuner here, and this should now show this is hitting middle C when we when we hit it. It would be easier if I had a keyboard. So I'll just program them in, in and then have a look at this tuner. Whoops. We can... It's more or less C. Now, it's perhaps not showing exactly C on the tuner because there's some vibrato in her voice. Um, so you could tune it slightly. I've just detuned it and now it's hitting C. Excellent. Okay, so now all we need to do is take this riff and use it on our vocal. So we can delete those. And now it sounds like this which is obviously too high. So at that point you can go in and you can just drop it a couple of octaves. Now, if you press the legato button, it's going to bring those out to their fullest. And this is the next cool thing that we can do. If you switch to a sampler in Ableton, it would be to the sampler instead of the simpler. We can now actually loop the end of the vocal. So it's gonna start repeating and coming back. And you can choose where you want that loop point to be, but that can be a really nice, interesting way. Especially if you use this crossfade feature, which will allow you to smooth that loop point. Very cool. Now, when you start adding effects to that as well, and creative sound design is all about adding effects in interesting ways, but we could add some kind of bit reduction and then let's use some OTT as well. 
multiband compression. Now, if we go to MIDI and change the pitch bend range to be 12, now we can actually add some pitch bends as well, like so. It doesn't sound so good with the bit reduction. And now if we add some more effects to that, like an echo, we can get really interesting sound. So we don't need this tuner button anymore. Maybe I'll turn off the loop. It's all about experimentation. Now the last thing I'm going to do this is just tweak the attack, decay, sustain and the release on the riff. So it's a bit more plucky. I think that sounds better. And there you have it, using a vocal as an instrument rather than just the vocal as audio. The third creative sound design technique is resampling reverb and then you can reverse it. Now, I do have another video on this, which I'm linking to as well, but this is a very popular way to introduce new elements into a track smoothly so people know it's coming basically. So we've got this vocal in our track, a kind of orchestral one or opera type vocal. And I want to just introduce this before it actually hits. So what I'm going to do is get the first syllable. So this one, I'm just going to copy it and paste it onto a brand new track like this. Let's make sure it's loud enough. So we're just going to bump up the gain. I'm just going to consolidate it and press R in Ableton to reverse it. So it's going to sound like this. And that's just reversed. Now what I want to do is put a nice long reverb on there. So you can use any reverb, but I'm going to use the Ableton stock reverb, 100% wet, and then put the decay time to probably for a track like this, about three seconds. Not three milliseconds, that would be crazy. Okay, three, millise uh, three seconds. And now we need to resample this. Remember, we talked about resampling at the beginning. So I'm going to create a new audio channel, take the input from this, which I'll just call, I'll just call reverse, take the input, here we go, arm it, and then just record it. Here we go. It's quite quiet because we've put the uh, volume of that track down. But that's fine. We can now delete that track. So we've just got our sampled reverb. We'll turn warp off, don't need that. Bump up the gain, like so. And then we need to reverse this again. And what this is going to do is lead in to this first syllable. We're going to cut off the end because that's actually the sample and we just want the reverb tail. And now we can line it up nicely. And this is going to lead into this first syllable. I'm going to fade it out like so, so it's a bit smoother. And now let's have a listen to it. So we can actually bring it a bit further. And this is like that effect in Firestarter. Yeah, Twisted Firestarter. That's what they used there. And now with everything else on, let's have a listen. And we could use that for this piano as well. We could do exactly the same thing. Sample that first chord, reverse it, add a reverb, then resample that reverb, then reverse the reverb, and then do exactly the same thing. It makes sense if you think about it. Okay, on to the next creative sound design technique. Okay, the next technique is gating. And this is very popular in trance music, especially back in the late 90s, early 2000s. But what we're going to do is use some gating to create an interesting rhythm with one of our element so I'm going to do it with the chords today so I need to change it from Senzoni as we set it to that earlier when we were using it for vocoding I'll change it back to master and this is the sound I'll turn off the reverb just to avoid confusion 
and I'll turn up off the pump compressor as well. So we want to create an interesting rhythm there. Now the way we do that is we create a MIDI track. I'm just going to call this trigger because this is going to trigger our noise gate on this chord. Next thing I'm going to do is just pick a simple synth. Wavetable will be fine. And the important thing is here to give it minimum release, uh, maximum sustain, and maximum attack. So it's a really stabby sound. I'm just going to choose a saw wave, but it doesn't matter which sound you really choose. But we just want optimum control over it. So now what I'm going to do is just using the beats, I'm going to program in a rhythm that I really like that's going to work for this. So let's just solo this and the beats. Whoops, that's the bass. It doesn't matter which note you program it on, but I'm going to do it on a note that works in the key because it's just going to make it easier and to, to my ears when I program it in. Okay, so we want to go to a smaller grid. And just think about what rhythm that you want your synth element or vocals to play. Cool, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna repeat that now, duplicate it across my whole clip. And now this is what we need to do on the chords channel because that's what we want to do it with. We need to select a noise gate. Again, you can use a third party or you can use the one that comes with your DAW and there'll always be a noise gate included. And now let's just put it on our chain. Let's just minimize that. And now we need to open this little button if you're using the Ableton one. Choose side chain, and we're going to take the input from our trigger channel here. And what this is going to do is trigger this noise gate, which is going to shut off the sound of our chords. So I'm going to choose the, we, we don't want to hear this trigger sound. So I'm going to choose sends only. So it's just going to be used for side chain purposes. And now let's dial in the right settings on this chord and get the threshold right. Nice. Now what I'm going to do is take hold down and release. And then you can tweak it to taste using attack and release. So you can give it a slightly reverse feel by adding some more attack. Add some release. And that's going to soften it down. So that can add a cool effect as well. Let's listen to that in situ. I'm actually going to add the sidechain pump back as well. So we've got two things actually ducking those chords now. Now let's have a listen. It sounds best without the sidechain pump though. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah, that's that's awesome. Okay, let's get on to the next one. Okay, for the next creative sound design technique, this is something that I personally like to use and it's part of my signature sound, but feel free to use it if you like. And that's using vocal chops as part of the rhythm, using your voice as a drum, basically. So let's just solo the beats and have a listen. And we've got our chords playing the vocoder, but that's fine, we can keep that. So with these beats, let's just loop it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my drum rack and load in a couple of little samples of me breathing and yeah, just making little vocal noises. And you can take these from existing vocals, that's fine. So here we go. Um, bom, bom, bom. 
I like using female ones as well because I like females. <laughs> okay, so we've got these little breathy sounds. Doesn't matter though, could be a bloke. And the important thing is just find something that's got some percussive energy. So I'm going to bring in two different ones here and I've actually processed them differently. So I added a stereo widener to one of them. Okay, we'll use this one as well. And now we're just going to add in some little beats on the 16th. And now we've got this kind of effect. A bit loud. It's usually quite subtle. And you can have reverse sounds as well. So let's find a reverse one. I think that's probably me. And you can tighten them up by reducing the end point. And let's just program one of these in. Just makes your rhythm sections more interesting. And what I'm going to do is also make it so that if I choose classic mode and take off the release, as soon as that MIDI note ends, the sound is going to stop. And that's what we want to keep it really tight. Like that. I think that would be better there. Cool, so now let's just copy that. Just makes things a little bit more interesting and with all the drums on. Cool, that's pretty much it. So let's get on to the next one. Okay, for this next technique, this is another resampling one, but then we're gonna use some formant shifting. So I'm gonna to go to the chords and I'm gonna turn off the gate because we want that sustained sound for this. So what I'm gonna do is create another channel, audio, and I'm just gonna resample this loop here. So external input from chords, arm the track that we want to record into and then just solo that and record it. Okay, we'll just pause that and get rid of the end bit. Now at this point, what we want to do is make sure that it's warped and you can choose beats or because that can create some interesting artifacting, which is where it glitches a bit. So let's have a listen. But now what we want to do is pitch this up an octave. In fact, we're going to have to choose Complex Pro so we can shift the formant. So my mistake there. Let's put this up an octave. Or perhaps two octaves. Now it might sound a bit weird, but if we just fade that in underneath and you could drop that down as well, it's just gonna add some extra interest and richness to this sound. Some more harmonics. See, hear the difference? That's off. And you can do that with anything as well. So let's listen to it in the mix. Hear that extra texture. Off. And on. Beautiful. Okay, on to the next one. The next one is extreme pitch shift. So 
in similar ways to that formant shifter, we can add some more interest and some more kind of texture and grit to the sound if we are doing extreme pitch shifts. Now, I want to give an example of what might happen using some effects when it's involved with this. I want to get a bit more extreme now to, to get things really interesting. So if we've got these chord sounds here, again, we'll use these again and we are going to re-trigger them or we don't need to we're just going to go to what we had before which is and then pitch it back down so this is in effect the resampled sound what i'm going to do is actually resample this with some more effects on it and show you what i'm going to do yeah so we'll, we'll delete that forget what i just said a second ago now let's put some interesting effects on these chords so what i'm going to do is find some kind of special effect i think a i'll use one of the ableton ones i'm going to use a flanger so let's just open that just pop it on there and again we're just going to temporarily use this sound and after that we are going to put a delay on oh, let's put a uh, Echo, ping pong, take out the low end. So you can hear we've got really interesting sound. Now, at this point, we're going to resample it like so. That's just so interesting. That will do. Now we can get rid of those effects that we've just used on our main chords because we've got this resampled version now, like so. Now if we extreme pitch shift this using a sampler instead of the audio, it's going to speed it up as well. And this is where things can get really interesting. So we're going to use a sampler or a simpler. I'm going to drag this into the sampler, like so. Delete the track that we just had. And then I'm going to draw in this sound on middle C. Let's have a listen. And if we put it up another octave, we can hear how much faster it is now. Let's give it some more gain. So it's actually running through that chord sequence much quicker. So now if we just loop this, we're, again, we've just got the extra layer of interest on there. Perhaps it's too high and we will take it down an octave. That's very cool. Okay, on to the next one. I kind of went off on a bit one there. Okay, macro. So this is when having automation and tweaking things within the synth itself or the sampler can be really interesting. So we've got our bass sound, but let's create something a bit more interesting with more movement. I'm just going to turn off the pump compressor. Now we've got a sub bass and our mid bass separated out for mixing reasons, which you can find out by clicking the video that's popping up now. But let's call this interesting bass. And this is where some synths like Serum absolutely come into their own because you can automate a lot of different things. It's a wavetable synth as well. So if we find a sound to just start with, I don't know, this might be the wrong sound. <laughs> You can see all that interest is coming from automation. So we've got LFOs and envelopes triggering each of these different parameters. But it doesn't have to just happen within the synth itself. If you've got other sounds outside that synth, so I'm going to create one from scratch just so you can see how this might work. If we find a serum here, 
just a standard saw synth. What we're going to do is find an interesting wavetable with some different shapes. Uh, let's, let's find one that looks interesting, because that means there's going to be a lot of difference in the sound when you tweak it. Great, so this is what you might do if you want to start playing with some effect outside of the synth itself. Let's put a redux on there. Let's put some kind of uh, filter, I think. So if we go to EQs and filters, I'm going to choose uh, auto filter. Uh, so we've got a couple of things going on. Now what I'm going to do is group these all together. And that, if we press this button in Ableton at least, allows us to now assign these different parameters to one of these macro knobs. Kind of like what you can do in Serum over here but we can apply them to effects outside of Serum as well. So I'm going to choose a filter within Serum. Let's choose an interesting comb filter. Which allows this kind of effect. Add some unison. Fantastic. So what we're going to do is apply this macro here to several of these effects. So I'm going to press this button here, configure, we'll assign it to cutoff, and we'll assign one to the wavetable position. We're also going to assign it to this redux rate. Okay, now that comes in a second. So uh, let's go back to wavetable position. Perfect. So that's what we're going to effect within Serum. And now we need to assign these different controls and some of these to this macro knob. So I'm going to press map. And this is what Skrillex does for his interesting bass sounds as well. I'm going to map it to that. We're going to map this one there. We're going to map this one there. And we're going to map this one there as well. Now, at the moment, they're all mapped to be minimum at zero, maximum at one. But you can switch these around. So when this knob is at the top, one of them is actually on the minimum, and then it switches round when you close it down to then it being on the maximum. So it's all about experimentation at this point. But you can create some really, really interesting effects. So now let's play this bass, and then control this macro knob at the same time. I might take off this auto filter. And the possibilities here are endless. You could have several different macros. You could have LFOs controlling the macros as well. And that's really when you can get creative with your sound design. So let's just bring that in. I'm gonna filter out the low end and we're just gonna have this as a top texture to add some more texture to our bass. But it doesn't have to be to just bass, of course, you could do that to lead synths or anything, really. But I'll get rid of it for now, but hopefully that gave you an example of what's possible. Okay, now we're on to one of my personal favorites, and that's to use interesting multi-tap effects. And that basically means, well, usually we'll have a multi-tap delay, but you can create your own within whichever door you're using and create different effects for each one. And this is where you can apply some really crazy things. So I'm gonna find something that I might want to have a delay on. So let's choose this harmony riff that we made earlier. And I'm gonna turn off the echo and we're gonna create our own multi-tap echo or multi-tap delay on an auxiliary channel. So I'll create an auxiliary channel like this. It might be called a send channel if you're using a different door, but that's fine. Let's call this vocal FX and let's create this multi-tap effect unit. So I'm gonna go and select a delay unit, just a simple delay unit like so. 100% wet because it is on the auxiliary channel. And let's just feed some of that in and we'll create a multi-tap delay. Oh, 
Already sounds interesting, but now let's take the feedback down and duplicate this. So now I'm going to create two more chains, just duplicating it, each one with a different delay unit and each one with different delay settings. So this one might have these settings and not be ping pong. And this one might have a random five setting. And now we can EQ them differently as a starting point. But this is where it gets really interesting because at this point you can start applying to other effects to them after each one. So the first I'm going to apply is some kind of flanger or phaser. So let's put this one after the first one. And then you could apply some EQ after that, maybe a bit of reverb, soften it up a bit. Now I'm going to show you something really wizard. Firstly, let's put another, we'll just use two for the time being. Let's use the second one, which is very standard at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a vocoder on there. This is kind of combining one that we did earlier. Uh, let's go to audio effects, vocoder, and I'll take the input once again from the chords. And let's just have a listen to this. Like I defy you to tell me that that's not cool especially when you start applying some other stuff. So we'll sh shift the foreman. And now we're going to apply a flanger to that. Uh, now I get excited, see? So many possibilities. Let's switch it to flanger. And the way that you arrange these plugins will make a difference to the effect. And now all together. Tweaking them a bit. All together. Very cool. Okay, on to the last trick that I want to show you today, which is what I like to call squiggle sampling. Now, I actually got this from Ill Gates, so props to him for that. But this is a really cool uh, idea for just creating interesting glitches in your track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an audio channel like this, and I'm going to resample the entire track. So I'm going to choose resampling. And then I'm just going to sample, say, a few bars of this. Whoops, I suppose I need to actually press record. Okay, so see what's happening? We're resampling the entire track here. And now what we are going to do is create another audio channel and we're going to call this glitch and we're going to resample this track. 
Uh, but let me give you an example of why this is special. So now our audio is coming from this glitch channel that we just recorded, which sounds like this. Exactly as you'd expect. But what we're going to do is put a delay on this. We're going to make sure it re-pitches when you change the speed. We'll take off the synchronization. At the moment, a, a normal delay would sound like this. So you can hear when we feed it on. It's delaying the signal, as you'd expect. We'll turn the feedback right down. We'll turn the dry wet right up. We're going to take off this sink and we're going to de detach these two and make them separate. And now let's listen to what happens when we change these. You could even link them. It re-pitches it in really unexpected ways. In fact, I'm going to detach them. Because you can get some really interesting stereo effects then. And now all it is, is just record and then tweak that as we go. So now we've got some really interesting sounds in this new channel. So we can, well, we w if we wanted, we can keep this glitch track. Uh, whoops, we're going to have to turn, get rid of the delay. So if you say we now just were working on the final version, now we can bring in these little bits of audio. Like this. And just switch out from this one. And make a little composition. Right, this is pretty cool. So we could have that as a record stop there. It's all about experimentation, this, but it's a really interesting way to get interesting pitch effects. That's kind of cool. Hmm, cool. And then we can just add this bit here. Bum, bum, ba, dam. And let's find a reversey bit. That's cool. So then this bit, we can have it as it loops around. And again, this is just experimentation. So let's have a listen to our finished, messed up track with creative sound design. That's pretty cool. So I really hope you've enjoyed this, guys. You can combine all of these together, of course, and let me know which of these has really sparked your interest, which of these ones you are going to try 
do let me know in the comments below. I really, really want to know. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share it, and subscribe to my channel for tutorials like this each and every week. And if you want coaching with me and to get your music to a professional level, like some of our other students now playing around the world in their own gigs, touring, releasing on the world's biggest dance music labels and getting supported by the world's biggest DJs, do check out my Accelerator program. It's great fun and it's the fastest way to get to a professional level. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you soon. Until next time, cheers and happy producing. Thank you.